Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. The weight of your physical house, your physical cash, your physical car, it counts very little in the realm of the spirit. Remember the parable of the five talents. What was the first gift he gave them? Talents. What was the second gift he gave them? Authority over nations. You have been faithful in this. Now I trust you with authority over kingdoms and nations. But the highest level of trust is trust over his program. That is the kind of authority that people like Anna the prophetess carried. They didn't seem to have houses so you would think they were weak people. But Anna the prophetess literally prayed salvation to come. When Jesus appeared, she didn't say, I'm seeing a child. He says, now I can find rest. I have seen the consolation. It has arrived. So when you see, I'm trying to redefine your understanding because we have a generation sadly that has been a perverted as far as our idea of success and achievement is concerned. What will make a man that God has honored globally to come and it's, it, if he had gathered people maybe in their 30s, 40s, 50s, it would seem to make a lot of economic sense. But what will you do with people to, you know, these very little children, some of them here, and then to pour out his life? We need to learn to redefine the things that bring joy to the heart of the Father at his expense. You will look at these ones now and think they amount to nothing until you see what the power of God can do in the life of a yielded vessel. Hallelujah. So I just wanted to say a word on that as a challenge to us. People brag around and say, I am a millionaire, I'm a billionaire. All that is nonsense. The only value that anything you have gets is how it participates in supporting the program of God and the agenda of the Spirit. If you say you are a billionaire, it's not enough for the realm of the Spirit to clap for you. What has the billion done with respect to souls, with respect to transformation, with respect to remolding destinies? In the seminary, we used to sing the song that says, Thus will we pass from the earth and its toiling. It says, Only to be remembered by what we have done. No man's money has gone to the grave with him. No man's talent, in fact, has gone to the grave with him. Hallelujah. So this is a call for someone. You are about to give an excuse and say, I cannot sing. You may not be able to sing, but if you get three people within your care, three young ladies who are roaming around in a visionless way and put some level of order in their lives and help them to become better wives, help them to become better people, we make impact one life at a time. The idea of wanting to change the world has deceived many people to the extent that they are not changed themselves. You change the world by changing one person at a time. Let your life be a minus one to the kingdom of darkness that because God prospered me, someone went to school. Because God prospered me, someone came to church. Because God lifted me, someone got a job. Are we together now? Because God granted me influence, somebody came to know the Lord. Because I had an encounter with Jesus, he helped me to raise three other apostles, four other people. That is the testimony and the pride of the believer. We need to trust God for grace to get away from some of these mundane credentials that we bring and pride ourselves around. I am a great man based on what? I have an estate. Congratulations, we do not downplay that sacrifice. But what else? Estates don't talk. Estates are not, they, they, they don't, they, in themselves, they don't transform men except they are used intentionally as tools. While you are standing, I want you to pray one prayer from the depth of your heart. 
Lord, if you're changing someone in this city, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, if you're lifting someone in this nation, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, if you're blessing someone in this nation, don't do it without me. So take my heart and mold it. Take my mind, transform it. Take my will, conform it to yours. Yeshua, Hamashiach, oh me na na Yeshua, Hamashiach, oh me sing it one more time. Lord, we obtain grace tonight to become and to remain relevant in your program. That every time you seek for a people, we declare that we are available. And for some of us, we declare that we are still available. In the name of Jesus, bless our hearts tonight by your word and let Jesus be glorified. For in Jesus' matchless name we pray. God bless you. Please be seated if you can. Hallelujah. Now, let me start um, by making two very, very important announcements. And I want us to please listen, especially to our global family, those in the US and those in Europe. I need to challenge us every once and again. We have a rise in the activities of fraudsters using my name to make calls and parade people around claiming to give prophecies and you know all kinds of things selling books and trying to do all kinds of things taking advantage of people's zeal and passion let me tell you this i've not said it here but for every scammer and every fraudulent person, if I be sent of God, may God judge you. Are we together now? Just because we keep praying the prayer of mercy all the time and we say, Lord, just take it easy with them. I'm saying it again. May God punish you. And you would think it's just a man's anger till you see what happens. There are people who have whose authority is derived from the very throne of God. It is the reason why God grants us the character to manage our speakings because of the power he has invested within it. Imagine people calling someone to tell lies and say, I am Joshua Selman, and maybe a desperate woman, maybe a widow trying to look for help for her dying son, and you ask her to transfer $100, $1,000, all kinds of things, in, in whatever name 
claiming to give prophetic words. May God punish such people. Are we together? That is on one hand. But on the other hand, ladies and gentlemen, if you are spiritual, wisdom comes with spirituality. Are we together? Yes. There, but you should be able, we are saying this for the sake of unbelievers and those who have not been connected genuinely to this family of faith. I mean, it, it does not make sense. God bless you, media. Right? It does not make sense. Well, this is not really the announcement. This, I'm not on social media, doesn't get the job done. You let them know that this, this fraudulent and satanic activity it's not, I mean, you misrepresent God, you misrepresent the ministry, and you cannot believe the millions of dollars that have been cut these scammers. If they are not getting anything, they will not continue doing what they are doing. So please, I'm saying it to our family in Nigeria and then our global family. Anybody who calls you, if you are in Nigeria and the person is within access, help us to take him to the police station. Hallelujah. Yes. That this person is a fraudulent person using the name and the guise of the ministry. And please, if you know anybody and you have any number, please report to the security. Um, you can walk to our PR desk immediately after the service saying, look, I've been scammed by this and that. It doesn't guarantee that we'll do anything physical, but at least we can take action. Are we together now? It is, a, it is a, it's a very terrible thing. People are hungry and desperate for God and there are people who take advantage of this. They wait for moments like today now. So Koinonia family, we have our official lines. There's the official protocol line. There's the official media line. Are we together? There's the official security line, finance almost all the major departments that correspond with the international community and for those of us who are here who have come from other nations we receive visitors from several nations every week please ensure that you are not scammed we are a ministry of integrity and if you have any question the pr desk is at the back you can always ask questions Hallelujah. Don't allow yourself to be scammed because some of you, that scamming works because intrinsically there is greed and selfishness there. Are we together now? Yes. So please let's take, let's take note of this so that while we serve the Lord, we do not allow the devil to take advantage of our loving people who love Jesus sincerely and seek to love and to know him so that's very important um the second that i want to just quickly bring before i charge our hearts tonight is i have been burdened because of my inability to have direct access to people i know that not being in social media you know in this generation is very difficult because there are legitimate people that want to have access so i decided i told the media to come up with an email that i'm going to announce now and that I am the only person who will respond to it. It will be a direct email. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, let me tell you what the email is for. Miles Munro said, when the purpose of a thing is not known, because this is the kind of thing, especially for this, our stubborn generation, when we announce good things like this to help people, you will find somebody just sending an email, just saying, hi, this is not what it is for, please. Please, I don't mean to insult you, but let's listen. Instructions are important. People fly by instructions. This, this email is just to be able to help because there are people who, based on either their status or based on several other factors, distance, access, they may not be able to reach with certain information. And in as much as we allow the PR, the protocol and the rest, it is only wise, even organizationally speaking, that there should be a platform where I can have direct access to these people. So it's AJS at koinonialglobal.org. AJS at koinonialglobal.org. You send an email there, be patient, and just know that I will reach you. So whether, especially for um, our family in Europe and US, we have 
conferences that we're putting together next year so you find that handy so that when we begin the planning we can instruct you on what to do and how to go about it so let me encourage you please ajs at koinonialglobal.org that is for now the direct link email that um, you'd be able to send me a mail uh, there are some information that are very important especially by people who might be general overseers some of them politicians heads of states heads of nations you cannot expect a head of state maybe the president of a nation to want to reach me and have to go through pr you know and so on and so forth it may not suffice praise god so that's it we have it there we release it in the name of jesus christ let it contribute towards helping the body of christ and being a blessing to God's people. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. We'll take a few other announcements at the end of the service, but I'll charge our hearts and then we'll pray. Please pray in the Spirit and ask the Lord to speak to your heart tonight. In the name of Jesus, we have already been challenged by Dr. Panam's ministration. That is already a message for someone tonight. Go ahead and pray. Mighty God, we give you praise. The entrance of your word gives light and understanding unto the simple. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. I made up my mind that I would still suspend our series to start next week um, since we gave some time to honor Dr. Panam and that which is being done but then i want to charge our hearts very seriously what i'm teaching tonight please listen what i'm going to teach you tonight um is going to contribute greatly to your spiritual adventure your spirituality and your overall stature in the spirit this is the assignment of the house of god to equip us with the kingdom tools that help us to be matured are we together that helps us to be able to stand in power and in grace this is our assignment as a ministry and we're committed to supplying the intelligence alongside the empowerment by the spirit that will help us to rise and to mature in the spirit i've been having a lot of very deep contemplations i can tell you that in the last three months i have had several encounters um with God as touching the coming revival, as touching the move of God that is springing forth particularly from this nation and spreading across Africa, Europe, America. But I believe that I have a mandate to make a contribution as far as preparing God's army. You would hear prophetic words from Nigeria to South Africa, to Ghana, to Kenya, you know across Africa that there is a mighty move of God that is coming and that is correct what we are expecting is not some is it's not it's not a lie it's not a figment of man's imagination there is an exact program in the realm of the spirit brewing up that will culminate to what I believe by the integrity of Scripture and by the wisdom of the ancient about the greatest revival that is returning Christ if you believe that say amen. amen and I sincerely believe that every one of us here has a major prophetic role to play in that revival but you see I've studied the history of the church in Nigeria and I've studied a bit on the move of God across several places like Scotland you know Finland uh, Fiji Island I've studied regions I'm a student of scripture and I'm a student of revival and I always like to study what brought God down to these regions in such power and in such grace. You would read every time in history that there was a time period where there was a mighty move of God. God just moved across people, moved across regions, moved across churches. When you read about the Azusa Street Revival, you read about um, the Welsh Revival, 
revivals that happen in Scotland under men like John Knox and in our own nation here great fathers like Apostle Babalola and the move that came in the 60s the 70s and it is important for us to not only anticipate blindly but to become like spiritual archaeologists to study the move of God past to know why it succeeded and why it failed are we together now and then to be able to draw spiritual lessons as we posture ourselves for the coming of this move across church to church across different apostolic and prophetic platforms within this country and in Africa you will hear people talk about the move of God people have come with visions prayer groups you know I've had the opportunity of visiting several prayer ministries I was in um, Archbishop Duncan Williams uh, prayer mountain the prayer tent when I went to preach for him massive massive facility and I had the opportunity to pray with his you know his private prayer warriors my goodness if you think you pray you need to meet those guys I mean just looking at them you will begin to pray <laughs> hallelujah but the charge that I gave them and and I've had the opportunity and the privilege of being uh, at where I, I believe is the largest prayer mountain in this nation is headed by a woman not even a man not a denomination very powerful solid woman in the spirit you know them by their humility their desire to not be known but my goodness they are deep deep in the spirit as I went around that prayer mountain climbing as if I was going to heaven I was tired but determined to understand it was not tourism for me hallelujah I've had the honor and the privilege of asking a few of the fathers of faith questions about the move of God during their time and what lessons they would want our generation to learn I've had the honor and the privilege of meeting a few people who pioneered major revivals all in a bit to be able to learn to understand for myself and then to make a meaningful contribution in preparing the body of Christ for this imminent move that is coming so I want you to listen very carefully to what I'm teaching tonight it's really a charge for me it's a charge because we're going to be praying intermittently and I hope and pray that this teaching tonight will stir up a fire within your spirit Amen. who is this teaching for tonight no, no 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 I will tell you you don't have to raise your hand the teaching tonight number one is for anyone who hungers after God genuinely beyond the 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 drama of religion beyond the drama of church tonight's teaching is for people who desire God sincerely number two tonight's teaching is giving life and meaning to the various encounters and visions that some of you have been having and yet you have not had definition around it tonight's teaching is for the esters is for the deborahs listen carefully tonight's teaching is for the the gideons that are still in hiding yet they have the destiny of warriors that will conquer the midianites Tonight's teaching is not for a lazy and careless Christian as usual. Tonight's teaching is not just for a give me, give me Christian. Lord, give me tea, give me bread. There is a place for that. Tonight's teaching is for someone who loves God enough to be at the epicenter of his prophetic program for the nations. Tonight's teaching is for a pastor, a man of God, an apostle, a prophet who wants to be in sync with the program of the spirit for the nations to know this present truth what God is doing now not what he did yesterday tonight's teaching is for someone who has veered off the path of the spirit and you are saying I need to get my life back again Lord I know that you have a prophetic destiny for me and for whatever reason I seem to have veered off but right now I am ready to be at the cutting edge of my prophetic destiny I tell you in advance so that you will know whether this teaching is for you or not 
tonight's teaching is for someone who has cried and prayed for more of his presence more of his glory that lord i desire that you mantle me with heavier and weightier dimensions of your power please help those under the anointing tonight's teaching hear me please is for people who from the bowels of their spirit there are mantles that are crying for expression waiting for a generation to hear those who are tired of sitting idle and being passive tonight's teaching is for people who are really looking for god not just for church not just for men of god not just for religiosity Tonight's teaching is for people who are hungry, saying, Lord, there has to be more. There has to be more. Tonight's teaching is for saviors, those who know there is a mantle upon their life to deliver their families, to deliver their generation, to bring to pass the prophetic word that he has put upon their lives. Tonight's teaching is for those who are in pursuit for authentic stature in the spirit tonight's teaching is for those who desire to be friends with god not just men of god not just women of god tonight's teaching is 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 is, is more than a training for a, a pastor an apostle a prophet we are moving past that realm tonight People who become the friend of God, like Abraham, like David. Finally, tonight's teaching is for men and women who understand that God depends on men for his prophetic end time program to come to pass. That God needs men. And they are saying, Lord, as you go around the north, the south, the east, and the west, do not pass me. I am ready and I am available. My grandfather was careless. He did not give you allowance into my family. My parents maybe were careless. But here is a chance to find a place in my family. Shanika Paso Let me tell you the truth up front. The days that are coming are like the days of Noah. Jesus said the coming of the Son of Man will be like the days of Noah. In the days of Noah, there were two groups of people. Those who were spiritual and discerning, who were busy about building the ark and preparing for the rain that was coming. And those who were eating and drinking and mocking the zeal and the passion and the fire of those who were preparing. It says when you see the signs of the days of Noah, know that the Son of Man is coming. A sharp divide between genuine, authentic spirituality and anything else that comes in between. In one minute, I'd like you to pray. Just pray in the Spirit for one minute. And then I begin to charge our hearts. This is Koinonia. Sabrandeke Pashka Lata Pakata Fresca de Beledisia. Shania Zabraska de la Sabragedia Paradosiata. It's a realm of your glory, it's a realm of your grace. I can see a mighty power moving in this place. We're in the presence of angels with God's glory on their wings. And like the voice of many waters, 
I can hear the angels sing. You are holy. You are holy. You are holy. Shabbat shalom. You're not wasting your time tonight. Ta-da-da. 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 That as you seek men, oh God, we are available in truth. We are available in deed. Moving past the gates of religion, moving past the gates of religiosity, into a real encounter with the Spirit. Shalada bakata fraska debeleke to shabrandege Kalish kada praske veneke parados kadia dabalados Shabrandege beleke tapas kadia dabalados yataba Shade brenge debeleke pa Please just press for one minute I just felt stirred in my heart as I raised this song That the Lord would have us press in the spirit there is a making that is happening in our lives tonight. Nina Kawa we are bo Sarkin Salama Nina Kawa Koti Sarkin Sarkin Salama Don't be tired. Dear Apostle, this is a price for power and grace with God. We'll raise your banner up. We'll shine your light so bright. We'll sing in honor of you. Yes, Lord. Let the maker make. Shale shamas kadiata. Let the refiner refine. 
Let the builder build. Let the maker make. Let the refiner refine. Let the builder build. Let the maker make. Let the refiner refine. In Jesus mighty name we pray. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Please sit down. Just help those under the anointing. There will be many impartations as I teach. You notice what God has been doing these weeks. Be sensitive to what God is doing. I want you to listen please. The greatest tool for the revival that is coming upon Nigeria, Africa and the globe. The greatest tool for this revival that is coming that we claim will be greater than the world's revival. That we claim will be greater than the Azusa Street revival. That we claim will be greater than the revival of the 60s, the 70s, and even the 80s the greatest tool for the coming revival will not be anointing listen carefully surprisingly the greatest tool you will need for the revival coming will not be anointing the greatest tool for the revival that is coming will not be financial prosperity these things are important and they have their place the greatest tool for the revival that is coming will not even be skill and talent. Please make sure you listen carefully that this revival that has been prophesied by fathers and veterans of the gospel and prophetically from scripture that it will happen as it were in the days of Noah. It will not just be based on who is anointed. Uh -uh. It will take more than anointing to host, sustain and be able to deliver the move of God that is coming. The revival that is coming will need more than financial prosperity. The revival that is coming will need more than skill and talent. In fact, the revival that is coming will need more than influence. As powerful as these aforementioned are, there are many people today who believe that they are prepared for a move of God just because there is the anointing. Congratulations, but I hate to be the bearer of bad news. The revivals that failed also had anointing. There was no mention of the absence of the anointing in the revivals that failed. There is no mention, in fact, many revivals that happened brought in economic, you know, empowerment to the citizens by reason of the development that it brought people from several nations and it increased the economic stance of those nations and yet the revivals still failed. The Bible and history is full of gifted men and women who cheaply aborted the moves of God in their generation. So it will take more than skill and talent. The Bible and history again is full of very influential people. The Bible is full of people who had the eloquence of speech. And my goodness, modern history has revealed people. You need to read the writings of some of these men like Charles G. Finney, E.M. Bounds. Their intelligence and their mental construct alone is, is a lecture for you. Aside from their spirituality, the depth of their understanding and the way they approach life was already superior by default. And yet some of these revivals failed. Now please hear me. This is what the Lord told me. The greatest tool for the revival that is coming and the greatest weapon for the revival that is coming 
will be a life that reflects the character of the Christ in thoughts, in words, in lifestyle. End of discussion. Isn't it amazing that beyond anointing, beyond skill, beyond financial prosperity, the Lord is saying that the greatest tool, the greatest prerequisite, and the greatest enhancer of the revival that is coming is not any of the things aforementioned, but a life that reflects the character of Christ in thoughts, in words, and in lifestyle. We are talking here about a realm of intimacy with God becoming a friend of God you know we live in a world right now where we are so conscious of being men of God we are so conscious of being um MOG you know when you say apostle prophet it seems to carry some kind of status it can earn you access to the hearts of men you can be endeared to men based on whatever title that you carry but we are not talking about ministerial titles here this is more than becoming an apostle more than becoming a prophet more than becoming an evangelist listen carefully this realm i'm talking about is a realm beyond being prayerful this realm i'm talking about is a realm beyond knowing scriptures this realm i'm talking about is a realm beyond being anointed because for us in the body of Christ and sadly in this generation it looks like the apex of your spiritual pursuit is being anointed and don't get me wrong the anointing is important I have taught you extensively but the days that are coming will need more than being an anointed person the devil has fooled many people into believing that the zenith of your spiritual pursuit as you strive to be a man or a woman of stature is to get to a point where you become anointed so we gauge our spiritual walk when you pray when you fast you check your level of anointing once it rises you say wow i've made progress i am telling you there are superior parameters for measuring power and strength in the spirit beyond anointing you would be mistaken to think anna the prophetess was not anointed there's no mention of her healing the sick. In fact, the Bible says of all the prophets that came before John, he said John was the greatest. Show me how many people John raised from the dead. Show me how many miracles John did. And yet this was a man who was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. Hear me. I wrote something down here. The church needs to be drawn back to the most superior parameters for measuring intimacy and success with God. We have used mundane and very inferior parameters. That means if I ask you to arrange any two or three people based on their intimacy with God, chances are excellent that you will use the parameter of anointing or maybe crowd in ministry for a man of God, are we together? Or the extent of their knowledge of Bible, or the extent of their dexterity as far as their commitment to prayer. These things are wonderful, but you will be mistaken. In the midst of all of this, you can still be deceived. There are more superior spiritual parameters for measuring the depth of a man's intimacy and walk with God. Are we together now let me tell you the truth this 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 these are my very deep contemplations when it has to do with matters of death to the flesh when it has to do with matters of death to the flesh it has to do with matters of character and it has to do with matters of Christ-like manifestations I wrote here there are no champions there let me announce it up front. There may be champions in the area of prophecy. You can find people who as soon as you look at them. I once met a man of God years ago, sincerely. I'm not sure, he's not even on TV. I went for a retreat somewhere and I met that man. Have I ever seen a prophet like that? 
this man would prophesy head to toe and say everything. I have seen champions in the area of the prophetic. History, both ancient and modern, is full of people who took this Bible and literally transported it into their heads. When you listen to some of our fathers of faith, it's as if there is another eye that was given to them that they can open. Even some of us who have touched a bit of this, we know the labor in the spirit that brought this dimension of spiritual acumen. And yet you will hear the fathers talk about scripture. There are champions in the areas of scripture and revelation. There are champions in the area of church growth. There are people who you can take them to the village. They will bring every other village to that place. There, is, there are champions there. But when it has to do with the matters of death to the flesh, when it has to do with the matters of character, when it has to do with the matters of Christ-like manifestations, I repeat, there are no champions. Is someone learning now? Philippians chapter 3. Let's read from verse 12 to 15. Shama sama sana Apostle Paul, the, the, the deep revelator or revealer of scripture, Apostle Paul, the writer of two-thirds of the New Testament, not as though I had already attained. Paul is not afraid of saying this. Now you have to understand that he's speaking to the people he's mentoring. How many people have the sincerity and the unashamedness to stand before your mentees and admit that as much as they admire you, as much as they desire to be like you, you yourself have not yet attained. There are higher and deeper levels in the spirit. We live in a world where our pride, especially as men of God, is derived around the, the extent of our superstitiousness, if I will use that expression, and our, that, that kind of godlike mysticism. Here is an apostle who is saying there's no need to hide it. I have not already attained. Either we're already perfect, the word there is matured, but I follow after. Even while mentoring you, I follow after. Even while imparting gifts upon you to be established, I follow after. In other words, I am a student myself, just privileged to be in a higher class in the spirit. If I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended by Jesus Christ. Reading to 15. Give us verse 13. Brethren, he says, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth for those things which are before. He says, I press towards the mark of the price of the high calling, high calling of God in Christ Jesus. It says, let us therefore as many as be perfect, be thus minded. That means carry a mentality that never allows you arrive. That you know that no matter what kind of exploits you are doing in the spirit, no matter the level of the anointing, no matter the level of achievement in the spirit, that you know that there are still deeper and higher realms and dimensions in the spirit. If you're with me, say amen. Now, the Bible does not leave us in the dark as to the state of man, man as God's creation, with respect to the subject, please look up, with respect to the subject of sin and the flesh. I have taught you here that there are two things that man has to deal with. Number one is sin for an unbeliever. But for a believer, even though you have been washed by the blood of the Lamb, the Bible talks about the flesh. With one confession, you are free from sin. But it is not one confession that frees you from flesh. Many believers do not understand these dynamics that you have to be free from the grip of these two things to be able to ascend the mount of God and do mighty things with God. Being free from sin, as wonderful as it is, is the entrance into the kingdom but there is another major limitation are we together and that when it has to do with the limitation of the flesh it has nothing to do with being good 
or bad it is a limitation that is enshrined in all men please i want you to listen to me let it be from the depth of your heart before you become a casualty to yourself one of the biggest problems that has affected the revivals years ago i preached a message why revivals die it was a product of a research that i had i had to study the moves of god and why many of them died and i found out there was only one reason why revivals die the humanity of men not lack of prayer not lack of fasting no not lack of bible study not even lack of going to church the fact that the careers and the ones who work in partnership with the holy spirit to sponsor this revival are men listen when you press to know god the next project in your spiritual adventure is to know yourself if you do not pay the price to understand yourself as man i give you a guarantee you may not arrive you see history the bible and history is full of many great people some who crashed did not finish their project some of them were voices that were motivations to their generation and sadly towards the end of their lives something just happened that just eroded their testimony of many decades and let me tell you the truth I have studied people who have risen and stood and finished to the end. I have studied people who did not even start. I have studied people who started and did well and fell. First for my own life and then to be able to unravel this cancer of not finishing strong in the body. Are we together? I can tell you 95% of the people who have fallen in history and in the Bible are a lot more upright and sincere than many people in our generation yet they did not stand that means we have to learn there is something we need to understand about man there is a lot of blind bold face and arrogance that people are communicating in the body of Christ there are there have been sincere people who carry this baton of the faith with integrity and truth and even with that, some of them did not finish strong. It therefore is a challenge for us to understand what does it take to stand and survive being a light even to the end. You may examine many principles. You may say they were not anointed and demons came and destroyed them or they were not, they didn't understand this. Those were, they can be very valid reasons. But one of the greatest reasons is that they do not understand the construct of the fallen man. You see, when you understand yourself in light of the limitation that is upon all men, it will put pressure on you to need God as a matter of life and death. Your need for God will be artificial until and unless it is derived from this revelation of how incapacitated you are out of the assistance of God when it has to do with the issue of the flesh there is no man who sustains by default indefinitely the capacity to survive the varieties of of the what do they call it now the the various chains that the flesh can bring upon an individual please listen very carefully for someone tonight's message will be a lifeline is what you will hold on to that at the end of your life you will stand with strength and with grace when dr panam was speaking about this our dear ones here and was praying for them you know what was in my mind i'm very philosophical in my thinking i was not even really focusing on the people and him number one i was looking at the age difference and then number two i was asking what did he know and what did he find that kept him there because my goodness this world we have seen skilled musicians that did not last six months like orange they came out with fire and that's it this race requires a skill have you seen people run 100 meters and others don't even know how to stand well from the first step they are gone others will run to the end others in running they, they've not taken time to master this thing The flesh 
is a subject that has been approached from two standpoints number one from a standpoint of avoidance people refuse to talk about it simply because of the embarrassing situations that are wrapped around the subject of the flesh when you are dealing with the matters of the flesh it comes with a lot of embarrassment because it seems to expose man's limitation at its highest so most people prefer to throw it away and not talk about it and sadly some of the teachings that float around the body of Christ today use all kinds of things to just cover it and push it away whereas people are dying and they need help and need it fast number two those who approach it from a standpoint that is not scriptural and all that happens is unraveling the depth of darkness that is shrouded in flesh without proffering a scriptural pathway that leads to victory are you seeing the problem now so there are people who approach the subject of flesh by avoiding it so we have all kinds of things that are as a result of the flesh with no strategy for victory whatsoever and for others they only end up feeling condemned because they now come into the awareness of the, 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 the supposed strength of the flesh on them and then they begin to ask can I really survive will I really survive tonight is a word of hope let me show you two scriptures that define the state of a man every man including the person preaching to you listen carefully this is liberty coming psalms 51 we've read that scripture before but now you pay attention please give it to us media let's hurry up i told you it's a charge i hope and pray that it remains a charge have mercy upon me O god according to thy loving kindness according to the multitude of thy tender mercies blot out my transgressions too it says wash me thoroughly from my iniquity i've told you that iniquity is not sin there is a difference between sin and iniquity iniquity is a perpetual continual willful state of rebellion against god and his principles and cleanse me from my sin are you seeing the difference there for i acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me verse 4 it says against thee thee only have i sinned and done this evil thing in thy sight i hope you know this was the psalm of david are we together now when prophet nathan came to him over Bathsheba, and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest verse 5 behold now this is a very powerful information i was shapen in iniquity that means when my father met with my mother what happened there was not just biology there was the dna of sin that followed already as that baby was growing he was growing with the possibilities for every kind of sin please listen you have to get this most people think the things that destroy them are land it's not true the things that destroy are not land they are activated it is resident within man you need to listen so that you will understand the pathway that has been created I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me next verse thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden parts thou shall make me to know wisdom uh-huh let's hurry up media purge me with high soap and I shall be clean the psalmist is praying wash me and I shall be whiter than snow I wonder what that looks like make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice hide thy face from my sins and blot out my iniquities verse 10 it says create in me this is the scripture create in me a clean heart create in me a clean heart so what is the name of the one you have first create in me a clean heart not a heart i'm not praying for a heart i am praying for a clean heart oh god and renew a right spirit 
he uses the word clean he uses the word right create in me a clean heart O God and renew a right spirit within me three more verses cast me not away from your presence I will explain to you the meaning of this because this statement right here is how the clean heart will be created are you following now the possibility of having a clean heart created depends on your encounter and your intimacy he says do not rob me of the privilege of having access to your presence remember Moses prayed this same prayer don't let your presence go away from us Moses was the meekest man this one was a man after God's heart two of them it was presence dependent and take not your Holy Spirit from me verse 12 restore unto me the joy of salvation and uphold me with the free spirit 13 it says then then only when I have gone through this I will be able to teach transgressors your ways because he said I'm not the only one with this tendency so let me make myself the guinea pig to pass through this and explore in the spirit and know what it takes to command victory as a result of my own victory I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee is someone learning first John chapter 1 from verse 8 to 10 Apostle John is speaking still about the state of man he said if we say we have no sin he didn't say if I say I have no sin he said we everybody listening and everybody who will read if we say we have no sin he said we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us nine but if we confess our sins he says he God now is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness verse 10 if we say that we have not sinned we make him a liar and his word is not in us if someone is following say amen. amen these two scriptures in without any sense of ambiguity they describe for you the tendency of every man regardless the effort you make in yourself and by your strength to remedy that situation in iniquity did my mother conceive me there are many people who carry children as babies begin to grow in holy families that love the Lord a baby is growing and you look at him and say baby how are you he slaps you with his hand and while you cry he's laughing in iniquity did my mother conceive me this is a baby that has not done anything he will wind his tiny hand and give you a slap and you pretend like you are crying and the baby is laughing then he slaps you again where did that possibility come from it was not outsourced it was activated now let me tell you how sin and the flesh works it doesn't come from outside it is within but it needs an external activation system and it can wait patiently for many decades so you can be deceived to think because it has not manifested it is not in you are we together the Bible here tells us to not wait until the things that can activate what is locked up within us come because it may come at a time when your reputation is at stake it may come at a time when you are 30 years 50 years in ministry it may come at a time where you have two more years to finish with dignity and then something just comes and cancels out all the years let me tell you the truth when you understand what I'm teaching you, you will know that everyone that God is using, you owe them your prayer and your intercession. That prayer that God will keep and preserve people to the end is better than buying a car and giving someone. Is someone learning? Watch this now. So the Bible talks about the state of man. The next thing we should look at is God's standard. There is a standard for intimacy and friendship with God. Now, this is the challenge sometimes, respectfully speaking, 
with some of the gospels that we receive in the body of Christ that makes you just believe that friendship and intimacy with God has no conditions. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but let me tell you sincerely, not everyone can become the friend of God and not everyone can access that realm, can ascend to that realm of depth and intimacy with God, except and unless you fulfill the conditions. Regardless what time, we are living it whether it's 21st century 20th century whatever century we are living in the standards of god as far as friendship and intimacy is concerned will never change what are his standards psalm 24 verse 3 and 4. psalm 24 verse 3 and 4 gives us the standard of god as far as friendship with god and intimacy with God is concerned who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place the answer next verse he that has clean hands a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully that's the condition the Bible gives Ephesians chapter 4 let's read from verse 17 if God is speaking to you, say amen. amen. Pay attention now. Let's read. It says, This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind. Keep reading. Verse, next verse. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness to walk all on cleanness with greediness 20 but ye have not so learned Christ uh -huh. if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus keep reading that ye put off concerning the former conversation of the old man. Watch the things he says to put off now. Which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Uh -huh. And be ye renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man. Which is after God recreated in righteousness and true holiness. 25. Wherefore putting away lying speak every man truth with his neighbor for we are members one of another be ye angry and sin not paul had to find a way of saying how do i say this now will i really say don't be angry how many times was paul angry himself you will see it in his epistles he said be ye angry and sin not let not the sun go down upon your wrath 27 neither give place to the devil next verse reading to 32 let him that stole before you say still no more there must be him that stole rather let him labor working with his hands the thing that is good that he may give to him that needed 29 let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers next verse it says and grieve not the holy spirit of god whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption two more verses let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you and all malice 32 it says and be ye kind one to another tender-hearted forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you now look up please let me tell you something that um, I have I have observed sadly with the body of Christ it looks like for you to gain respect and to be looked at as a man of integrity you have to be a preacher of righteousness and to deal with all of these things but the the trouble here is that most times in discussing the subject of the flesh what we men of God do and that extends to fathers in their families leaders generally is that we line up all the attributes of the flesh and find the ones that we are guilty of then we exempt them 
in our discussion. So if I have a problem, I, I, are we together now? Yes. If you have a problem with stealing and money and you have collected money from politicians, when I'm hammering on the issue of flesh, I will nicely dodge away the issue of corruption and lash out on things like immorality and the rest and say, be a person of character. When you are training people to be men and women who die to the flesh, there has to be a holistic capture of everything that needs to fall off until people become people of spiritual stature. Are we together now? Very important. It's a mistake that we make and it's not because we are bad. It's just that sometimes we are weak as men. So when you have an issue, maybe issue of morality and whatever, when you are dealing with issues of flesh, you will hit issues of pride, issues of bribery and just brush away the weightier matters. That is how many people have been addressing the issue of the flesh that is why believers have not been empowered to deal with it watch this many of you here are virologists microbiologists how do you deal when they say a virus or a disease is out what do you do you don't run away from it the first thing you do medical science teaches us that you isolate that uh, whatever it is am i right on that and you begin to study its operation you now study if this is a virus, how does it work in the human body? Now you begin to learn how it works. And sometimes you can now use several parameters to come up with an antidote. Running away from the reality of that virus will not cure it. When the pandemic came, many people were, as much as we're having social distance, there were people who were close to the COVID themselves. They had to be close to it to come up with a vaccine. Is someone learning now so just talking about the issues of the flesh and running away from it without examining the intrinsic nature of man and looking at a scriptural solution that provides victory we will only be we will only be programming casualties again and again and again the Bible already comes to the conclusion to the hearing of all that man unassisted by God has tendencies you are not even aware of are we together the Bible talks about Jesus one day he entered into the temple and he saw people making merchandise of his father's temple you know what Jesus did he went out as if he was going out of the temple the Bible says he got a whip and he came and began to flog them and threw the, the, the table of the money changers. And he said, the house of my father should be a place of prayer and you have turned it into a den of robbers. Look at that kind of zeal, overturning tables. Many of you are legal practitioners here. If you sue Jesus to court, how will you judge that case? You will say, Jesus, you are not Caesar. Jesus, you are not the Herod. What authority did you have to turn their tables? You would have reported them. When Jesus, you need to know why Jesus is still interceding for us, even though he has died. Because when he walked as a man and went through the things that men went through, he had to go back with his body as a man. And even while he was seated, everything is done. He said, I will still intercede. In other words, that ministry of advocacy, he will say, Father, I know exactly what that man of God is going through. Because when I went to Jerusalem, I know what it means to give people bread and they say crucify him tomorrow. That man's anger, please do not put it as an offense against him. I, have an, I, I, I understand what it means. That's what it means to be a high priest that can be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. Please listen very carefully and learn. It's easy for you to look at a man and say this man is a wicked man, harsh to all his children until you find out the story of that man's anger. You will find out that at 18, that man was one of the most gentle person you will ever find. But all the siblings and everybody died and they left him with 30 children to raise all of them. That was the origin of that anger. The anger was in him, but there was nothing to activate it. And because it was not dealt with by the strength of the spirit, the presence of 30 children versus their school fees 
and a job that is the, the salary keeps declining is what activated that. No wonder a couple will get married and a woman will turn and say, this is not the man I married. Let me tell you, that's the man you married. It's just that what the, the activation system, when you see a man nice to his wife and say, I will never touch you, he's talking nonsense. If you are speaking by the agency of the spirit, you are right. But if you mean just because I love you, keep watching, your heart is listening to you. The day that something will happen, a man called me one time, I think there was a year that the man reached me, true story. A small boy went to kick a car, kick the man's car, you know children and all these their things, and he just crashed the car through a fence. The man was thinking of how to beat and kill this child. How do I start? It's not whether I would do it, I'm thinking of how I'm going to start killing this child. So when you are an onlooker, you will say, what kind of an angry man is this? Whereas the same thing in him is in you, waiting for an opportunity to come out. Why is this person jealous? Why is there jealousy among men of God? Why can't they just walk as one? Don't worry, Shay, you're about to start ministry. By the time you start ministry and after 10 years, you have only three members. You will know why people get angry. This is not an issue of good or bad. It's an issue of the human nature that has not been examined to be understood. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.